Hey, Newbie Dan here. Let's talk about runners, also known as miter bars, for table saw sleds. I'm going to show you how to make your own runners on a table saw, and I'll include some suggestions for what type of materials to use. So if that sounds interesting to you, stick around. Here's our goal. One or more runners that fit snugly in the miter slot with no side-to-side -side movement, but they slide up and down nicely. We want them perfectly straight on the sides, although it's okay if they have a slight bow. We want them thinner than the depth of the miter slot because we don't want them to drag on the bottom of the slot. But other than that, you can vary the thickness quite a bit depending on available materials and whether you're going to glue the runner to the sled or use machine screws through threaded holes in the runner. More on that in an upcoming video. For now, just make them around half the depth of your miter slot, give or take. Finally, if we're making them out of hardwood, we want the grain running up and down. More on that in a moment. There's a lot of different materials you can use to make runners. The thing you have to worry about is how much the runner will expand or shrink as the weather changes. One option is UHMW plastic. UHMW stands for ultra high molecular weight, if you care. It doesn't really shrink or expand at all. It is flexible though. You can buy it in sheets and cut it to fit your miter slot. There's links in the description below. You attach it to your sled base by drilling countersunk holes and screwing it into the base. Personally, I prefer making runners out of wood. Hardwoods, like maple or oak, change only a little with the weather. Just be aware which direction the grain goes. Wood expands along the grain, so use wood where the grain will be running up and down in the miter slot. If the grain runs this direction, when the wood expands, it won't be able to move in the miter slot anymore. And if it contracts, it'll be too loose. Lately, I find myself reaching for plywood for my runners. Any decent quality plywood should work well. Plywood doesn't change much with the weather, is relatively cheap, easy to find, and easy to work with. And you don't have to worry about which way the grain runs. So try different materials and decide what you like best. We're going to be cutting some thin strips of wood with the table saw. I'm going to use a gripper from Microjig, and at times I'll use the optional 1 8 inch width leg. Microjig is not a sponsor, by the way. If you don't have a gripper, and you're not sure how to cut thin strips, do a YouTube search for Cutting Thin Strips on a Table Saw. There's lots of videos with different ways of doing this, so pick one and give it a try. You'll also probably need a zero clearance insert plate, or else your thin strips may fall in the cracks. But don't worry if you don't have one. Check out Izzy Swan's video called Cutting Thin Strips on a Table Saw, because he shows a simple way to solve that problem. I'll put a link in the description below. The best way to cut a runner is to cut one side, put that side against the fence, and cut the other side. This way, you know you have two sides that are parallel and straight. However, the first thing you might try is to see if a board fits like this in the miter slot. You might get lucky and find that one seems to fit, like this piece of maple. Even the grain is running the right direction, up and down. The problem is, it's unlikely this board is perfectly straight, and that means the runner may not run evenly in the miter slot. But if you want to try, cut a piece about a quarter of an inch thick and give it a shot. If it works, you saved yourself some extra work. Assuming you didn't get lucky, let's continue. As you probably know, the hardest part of making runners is getting the width right so it fits correctly in your miter slot. And obviously, that means getting your fence in the right position. You can try measuring the width of your miter slot, then setting the fence to that width and cutting a runner. But chances are it won't be the right width. And the difference between fitting just right and being too loose or too wide can be just a few thousands of an inch. So I'm going to show you how to set the fence to the right position by sneaking up on the cut. That means we'll start with the fence too far out and gradually move it closer to the blade until we get it right. Once you've done it a few times, it gets pretty easy. Well, most of the time anyway. When we get the fence set right, we'll want to start cutting the runners right away. In order to be ready for that, we'll prepare one or more runner blanks before we work on sneaking up on the cut. In this case, blanks are pieces of wood that are the right length and thickness, but are a little wider than the miter slot. Once the fence is in the right place, all we need to do is trim them to the right width. If you have some decent plywood that's about a quarter inch thick, that's probably a good choice for runners. I don't have that, but I do have this three quarter inch Baltic birch plywood, and I can split it in half to give me two runners the right height. This plywood is already the length I want at 16 inches. I'll trim one edge just to make sure it's straight. Then I put that edge against the fence, 
set the fence a little wider than my miter slot, and cut the blank. I double checked to make sure I didn't cut it too narrow. Then I turn it on its side and split it in half. I've also got this piece of maple that I'll make some 12 inch runners out of. It happens to be the right width, which is just a little wider than my miter slot. If it wasn't, I'd trim it down. And the grain is running the right direction. I cut it into pieces about a quarter of an inch thick, so they'll fit down in my miter slot when I'm done. Here's my finished blanks. I double check them all to make sure they're wider than the miter slot. Now I'm ready to work on getting the fence set to the right width to cut my runners. I'm going to use a piece of scrap wood for this. By the way, for your scrap piece, use hardwood or plywood, not softwood. I used pine, and you'll see in a bit why that wasn't a good idea. Trim one edge to make sure it's straight. Then put that edge against the fence, set the fence a little wider than your miter slot, and cut the scrap piece. When you're done, double check to make sure you didn't cut it too narrow. Then mark the top, so you don't accidentally cut the wrong side. So we've just finished cutting the scrap piece a little wider than the miter slot, and now we're ready to sneak up on the cut. So unlock your fence, making sure it stays in the same place, then tap it on the side a little like this, and lock the fence back down. Then trim a little bit of the end of the scrap piece, and try to fit it in the miter slot. If it's still too wide, which it probably will be, Repeat the process by tapping the fence over a little more, and trimming some more. My fence doesn't stay in the same place when I unlock it, but I thought I'd try it the normal way anyway, just for this video, and I overshot the cut. So I have to use a jig I made and try this again. Someday I'll put out a video about this jig. Maybe. Anyway, if you ever overshoot the cut, just move the fence back out a little, and try again on the other end of the scrap piece. Once you get it to the right width, Cut the entire scrap piece and make sure it fits snugly, but it slides smoothly. You might find you need to trim it just a little more. Once we've got the fence in the right position, we can trim all our runner blanks down to size. Make sure to double check them. But when I trim my first blank, it doesn't fit in the miter slot. What the heck? Remember I said not to use softwood for the scrap piece? Here's why. Because softwood is, well, soft, you don't get the same kind of exact cuts you would get with hardwood or plywood. Kind of like when you cut a soft bar of butter versus a cold hard bar. The cut is just a little sloppy. So when I used the same fence position as I did with my softwood scrap piece, my hardwood runner ended up slightly wider. So I moved the fence over just a hair more and everything was fine. And then I could cut the remaining blanks. Here they are, and yes, they all fit just right. I recommend you try sneaking up on the cut over and over without actually cutting the final runners until you get comfortable with it. It's a lot easier to learn when you don't have any pressure on you to get it done right away. Now that I've gotten fairly good at sneaking up on the cut, I don't use a scrap piece anymore, I just use one of the blanks. Here's an unedited example of my go-to method. I made plenty of mistakes and still got it done in 7 minutes. Don't worry, I'll speed up the video. I started by cutting a 3 quarter inch piece of Baltic birch plywood to a little wider than the miter slot. I trimmed the end until I thought it was correct, but apparently I was wrong. I ended up cutting the entire length of the runner several times until I finally got it right. Then I split it in half, and voila! Two runners in about 7 minutes. So see, it doesn't need to be difficult. Lastly, I'll show you how to glue a runner to a sled base. In an upcoming video, I'll show you the method involving machine screws, but this should hold you over until then. Put some pennies, nickels, or washers in the miter slot to bring the runner up a little above the surface of your table saw. Figure out where you want your kerf in the sled base and set your fence. I've already done this. Put some glue on the runner. I use Type On 2. Then position the base against your fence and lower it down onto the runner. Press down to get a good seal, then put some weights on it and let it dry for a couple of hours. If you need to, clean up any squeeze out. You might have to do some sanding also. I'm using a piece of sandpaper here attached to a block of wood using spray adhesive. For more information, see my video on stiff back sandpaper. There's a link in the description. When you're done with that, you should be good to go. 
This video is part of an ongoing series about table saw sleds, which includes crosscut sleds, box joint sleds, runners, fences, or whatever else I can think of or you can suggest. So make sure you keep an eye open for other videos in this series. Well, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something from it. If so, please give it a thumbs up and consider leaving a comment. Thanks! Check out the description for links to products seen in this video. Just scroll down, click Show More, and scroll down until you see the links. And if you like what I do here, click that subscribe button, and don't forget to ring that bell to get notified about new videos. Thanks!